Well, everybody remembers his twisted fate as well, of course. He was famed <laughs> for that back in season one. But Naru on the other side is a man that can play any champion, it seems. Let's see how this works out, ladies and gentlemen. Pick and bands underway for the third match of World Championships. Twitch taken away along with Alistair. There are some strange and unique <laughs> champion pools at work in this game. Nice. Uh, one yeah. thing about Westdoor is 79% of opponent bans in the GPL were actually targeted at him. That's crazy. Most of them on Fizz, actually, who no, isn't crazy. banned this game. Uh, we might get to see some Westdoor Fizz here. One thing I did like is the fact that the crowd immediately ooed. The moment Twisted Fate was banned, they were like, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> we want to get to see Westdoor play it. It's not going to happen. The so. plays, the plays. <laughs> Fab Fabulous. Nidalee is available. Nidalee. It's, it's a champion he can go with. Maokai also in there. It really depends on what our passage want to throw at them. Slowly waiting to lock this one in, really taking their time. They know this is not going to be one of their hardest matches, but also not one of the ones they want to drop because this is the one they can grab for Whoa. sure. Both teams thinking that, and it actually is the Lee Sin lock-in. That is the main for Crystal. It's a lot of confidence locking yes, in that Lee Sin with so much power up on the board. Uh, these teams have no interest in the Maokai pick, though, it seems. Wow. Really, really, really interested in these early pick and bans. You know, I, 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 I seem to recall they did a lease in first pick against Legacy as well, and we were questioning yeah. it then. I mean, to first pick the jungler is a big, big deal, especially when there's so much on the table still. Came out 3-0 there. And it's like Kha'Zix is still up. Kha'Zix is a great jungler. It's, it's not yeah. like Lee Sin is the exclusive jungle now that's head and shoulders above others yeah. in power. It's just a confidence pick there for Crystal saying, yeah, we don't care. We can play anything. We can counter anything. And they want Lee Sin. So quite a bit left up with the Lucian Thresh lane being grabbed. Garnet Devil and Green Tea definitely liking that to their own, the White Steel lane. Holy Phoenix and Touch, pretty interesting composition. Touch just being the solo queue player for Holy Phoenix and it worked out. How are they going to round out the rest of this composition? The tree may get some play time here, D-Man. Yeah, it looks like Maokai being hovered over. I'm just looking towards Prides actually. There is no Nidalees in his champion pool from the summer. So that's a possibility that yeah. Dark Passage are thinking we didn't need to lock that top laner in. We know he can't go with it. I think maybe they're actually trying to force out Maokai. I'm interested to see whether this actually gets locked in. Mm. Whether they do go with this one or they're just thinking, okay, they've shown us their hand in the bottom lane. We're not too interested in that. It's the mid lane they want to focus on. The GPO is actually the first region I saw picking up Maokai after the rework, but it was as a jungler, surprisingly. Saigon, Fantastic Five picked him as jungle and often had a band against him. That was before he became a top laner at all. Uh, so, not that I expect a Maokai jungle in this game. Uh, they just don't really seem to care about him that much in the top lane. A lot of focus as well with no mid laner being picked that they want to see if they can get any more out of Westor before they give Naru something to pick. He'll be picking his mid lane and one of the last from Holy Phoenix or Touch. But HQ now to answer that Maokai picked up with the Nami. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Italy had to be somewhere. That's what we were saying. And they are going to hover it's, it on the side of AHQ. It's Boom. such a powerful pick, potential-wise. You pick it against Maokai, too, and you can definitely try and take advantage of some weakness early on in the game. Nidalee's one of the only top laners that can take over a game if Prize is able to get going on it. Well, Tristana is locked in, and it seems Syndra could be alongside him. Tristana, of course, Holy Phoenix got the pentakill in that final to get here from the international wildcard. Fantastic Tristana player. Very, very aggressive, I gotta add. <laughs> Those rocket jumps are used to go in, not out. A pretty squishy team being put together by AHQ as well. If they pick Cinder, I mean, Westdoor's obviously set himself up for a counter pick in the mid lane. A lot of teams did this. Fizz? It's gotta be, 100%. Oop. Yeah, I thought something smelled. You don't, fishy. you don't have that many bands no. against you <laughs> without being good at it. The fact that the crowd instantly reacted, they knew what was coming. It's going to be a big, big question, and it is a problem for a Syndra player. You are fairly mobile, but you can land those long-range stuns. It's really down to Westall whether he can dodge them. Oh. We saw the Zed versus Fizz play and canceling out the death mark. You're going to be canceling out that Syndra ultimate too, so Westor gets a nice pickup with that Fizz. I'm really wondering if the Twitch ban is worth it here. Nah. Because it's not like Garnet Devil plays all that much Twitch. He's still comfortable on Lucian, and now they have to deal with Westor's Fizz. I can't wait to see it. 
It's going to be an amazing matchup. We're getting ready to jump into this one quite soon. You can see the teams panned out now on your screen. Not much of a tank coming in for AHQ, and that could cause problems, but they love to fight, so maybe they'll get there in early before Maokai even can be a tank. Absolutely. We'll see how this one works out. Of course, the champions are locked in. Head over to Twitter and tell us which jungler you think will have the biggest impact in this game. Tweet your hashtags DPWin or hashtag AHQWin to at LOL Esports. And we'll check those out as the game gets underway. How is this going to work out? That is the question. We are champions yes, in our own yeah. right there, apparently. But <laughs> It's about the mid lane in yeah. a big way here. Yeah. As it always is in AHQ games. A lot of the time, you almost want to call AHQ Esports Club like West Door Esports Club because that's <laughs> pretty much every time you bring up AHQ, it's like, oh yeah, it's West Door's team. You hardly ever remember uh, Pride, Nas, Garnet Temple, or Green Team. It's just West Door. Hey, you got to go through the door if you're going to get somewhere. See how they go <laughs> coming into this matchup. DP versus AHQ, and we are on to the rift for game three, ladies and gentlemen. This has been an amazing start to Worlds already, and there is so much more to go. We'll see how this one works out. Of course, AHQ, home favorites. They are on home turf. Not had to travel very far for this one, that's for sure. <laughs> Just across town. And yep. We'll see whether that gives them some bonus coming into this one. This is a game they absolutely will be looking for a victory in. And with the home crowd advantage, we'll see if it works out for them. Dark Passage themselves won everything in Turkey for the last two years. Dominant over there. Didn't have that man, that Tristana that's twitching out in the uh, bottom lane. It looks like we're going to have a bit of a late invade here from AHQ. They're setting up. It is going to get spotted by that sapling. We'll see whether it times out before they come through, though. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. They're going... Oh, nope. It spots him a little bit early Surprise. right there. They all tried to run away. Not going to happen. So they have been found out, but looks like they're going to stick to it. They don't mind. May as well. Being fabulous. <laughs> Throws another soccer ball into the brush. It looks like he keeps it in the rough, so they're going to be safe from that invade. But oh, the bushwhack possibly to be set up here in the top lane. Wow. AHQ pulling out all the stops early on in the game. Prides could teleport down. They're really just trying to pull an early advantage in this lane. <laughs> they're in the wrong spot. They're in just <laughs> totally the wrong spot. Yeah, they have to abandon. We'll see where the Oh, they're trying to sneak around the sapling. Oh, 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 no pings. Oh, they got spotted. Yeah. No. Yeah, they got spotted. The question is, do they react? How do they perform? They're going to go straight for red. They want to get the red steel, so it's going to be a red and blue steel. The question is, when they come back, how do they cross? Yeah, both teams were spotted, so they'd have the choice of if they want to try and catch a fight right here. What an interesting set of maneuvers right here. I think Holy Phoenix and Touch should just back away. And yeah, the craziness of swapping buffs right there, and I don't think really anything's going to come of it. That Australian meta, as Pastry would say, Switching up the lanes, and everything's on the bottom side now. So top laners are going to be facing off against each other. A little bit of aggression towards the mid lane. Safety coming in from Nas. So Westor is not going to find too much pressure there, but he is not level two by any means right now. Whoa. And he is taking quite a bit of damage. Wow. Woo. Early aggression from Naru. They're using that ignite. Didn't see Westor panic too much, though. Held on to every summoners. Didn't react too quickly to that one. He started with the Crystalline Flask and a bunch of health potions. It's expected that Fizz will fall a little bit early to Cinder. It's the CS that we need to watch and if there's actually a kill because the harass is actually not that devastating for West Door. And there's still kill potential on West Door, or for West Door, I should say now. His Ignite is up, Naru's is down. So let's go through what's happened in the jungle because mm. it's a double blue for Nas and a double red for Crystal. Who's going to have the advantage here? you got to feel that Nas on the Kha'Zix, he wanted that double blue. Yeah, it gives him more sustain options. He does still have a slow with his W. Lee Sin. Yeah, double red works well for him as it's well. It's all right. Like, it, it's actually yeah. okay for both of them. Great hook. Didn't think that was going to land, but it does get touched right on the edge of his tail there. Nas getting seen out by a ward. Looks like he's just going back and forth, though, to make sure Crystal wasn't in the area. But guess what? He is. Could be very big as he's coming up around the backside. There's some bushwhacks in that trap. Oh, or that bird. Oh, mark in there. No, don't do it. No. Oh, whoop. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, he got rid of them all. Hey, I told him not to yeah. do it. <laughs> At least he managed to clear him out. Fab Favis doesn't have to worry about that any longer. 
All right, smart play there by Pride, getting the forward, not even a ward, but just the brush control for himself. Nas now to go back down, knowing that Crystal maybe have backed off from that count or from the gank, so he's going to get his try in. He's happy to stick around. He knows he's there. Fab Fabio's playing this one safe still. Risking it. Risking it. Now he's got Crystal coming back in. Let's see if he can bait this mm. one out. He has just hit level four. Crystal comes around. I think they're going to go instead towards Pride. They lock on towards him. Sapling will nice get the slowdown on him. Have they got enough damage? That is the question. Pride flashes away to the tower. He does get away free. Now can they turn this back around? No. They are both very safe. Lack of damage on both sides. Yeah, it really felt like Pride's was going to get away from that one clean, but Dark Passage had a lot of sticking power in that one, and Nas just could not retaliate very much damage there. Obviously, just the level 3 Kha'Zix not having the red buff to help him out either definitely hurt them there. Yeah, definitely a huge one with the red onto Crystal, forcing that flash. They may be a return to lane there for Crystal sometime soon. Great play coming out all around, but again, in the mid lane, we said it's a big focus. 39 to 28. Naru's been having his way so far as West Orc, but we haven't seen wow. the fights yet. A good hook coming in. Holy Phoenix towards the turret. Forced to jump out, but he doesn't gain much ground. Green Tea was already on his heels. Garnet's not going to be able to make it. Oh, he oh. forward to bring him closer. The play is almost coming oh. out. Trying to go a little too deep, but it's so back and forth, and he finally gets out. Yeah, they're willing to go in, but they just burned two flashes yeah. offensively. Obviously, every summoner spell in that lane was burned, save for the heel on Garnet Devil. Aside from West Star and HQ. The other playmaker is definitely Green Tea, and we're seeing why right there. He's landing those hooks right seemingly through the minions. Poor old Naz returning to that bottom lane. That's Ward still yet to time out, so again, does get spotted. Prides, though, turning back around on Fat Fabulous. Both sticking around in this lane for a very long time. Naru back in the mid lane. He's got the CS advantage building up over Westall. Went aggressive early, has got that Ignite now back off cooldown. And we'll see, of course, Westor just biding his time. Needs to get to that level six. It is about to strike, but Naru hits it first. We'll see what he decides to go aggressive and maybe try and burn that ultimate before he hits it. Yeah, Westor happy to stay. He goes for rings. He knows he can keep the lane going for a little bit longer. Yeah, Naru has handled him pretty mm -hmm. well so far. It's what's supposed to happen in a Cinder versus Fizz. Cinder is supposed yeah. to dominate. Uh, it's still somewhat close in CS, but this is kind of how you would expect the matchup to play out. And considering the hype that is behind Westor, I'd say very great job by Naru thus far. Interesting to see the two AD carries both having to go early, get the double pickaxes, or single pickaxe, pickaxe apiece, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, Pride's getting caught out. Fab Fabian is taken so, so low from this one, but has Crystal got the damage? No, Sonic Wave misses. Good dodge for Pride's. Prides might start taking over this lane now, too. You can see how quickly he was able to turn that around on Maokai, even though he had previously burned his flash. And that's going to be trouble there. Bit of a play here. Nah, it's just far off. He didn't want to get the leap in to get there. And it is going to take a little too long. Holy Phoenix actually dodges nice into everything. Oh, some trouble dodging the skill shots. First blood for AHQ. And the teleport was burned and canceled there, which will delay the Maokai in the bottom lane. That is a two-lane win for AHQ. Everyone but Westor actually stepping up. Yeah, I think a little overconfidence. They were trying to bait out a little too much there. And instead, we're not expecting the damage turnaround to come out so heavily from AHQ. Westor now, can he start putting pressure on Nauru? Will Nauru have an answer for him if he does? Big, big difference. Holy Phoenix is the man that needs to carry for Dark Passage. I always feel that. You've got to look towards basically all of their matches back throughout the year. He, he is the main man, and if he can't get going, if he gets slowed down in any way, which clearly AHQ have already figured out, that's the man they need to focus on, it's going to cause some problems. Green T is just locked in on his patterns as well. He has not been able to avoid those death sentences. Green T's percentage on those is through the roof right now. And it's just going to keep coming and coming until Holy Phoenix learns how to dodge them. And we see how aggressive AHQ is. The flashes are back up and they do it again. We were just mentioning that they had him down and they might play passive. No way, Jose. Now coming in from the top side, Crystal looks to make a play as even more happens in mid. The chum, the waters just misses, but back down to Pride. He's going to try to get away from Crystal and Fat Fabulous. He's a long way from home right now. <laughs> Yeah, he's not going away from this one, I don't think. Unless he makes a miraculous run, it will be a kill. This time, for Fab Fabulous. You can definitely see the focus right now. Dark Passage on the bottom lane, trying to get Fab Fabulous 
into a point where he can neutralize Nidalee and then probably come in in team fights. And obviously AHQ is focusing on the top lane to yep. try and get that Garnet Devil going. A nice bait as well. Fab Fabulous. We saw him just go down almost to Prides. And now Crystal is there every single time working that bait very nicely. So one to one on each side as both teams are making some great plays so far. And we even got a little bit of Rome towards, or not Rome really, but Nas trying to get help out from West Door and Green Tea coming into that mid lane gank that we saw missed out. So Pink Ward being cleared by Nas. What? They were he messed that up real bad. Yeah, he did. Nas had the sweeper down, but failed to clear the normal ward. Instead, wasted his attacks on pink. All right, never mind. He, that was actually smart. I'm a fool. Uh, he saw the timer on the green ward, knew it was going to die anyway, and saved time by killing the pink ward. Presence of mind, actually, <laughs> by Nas to do that. Clever little girl. Knew exactly what he was doing. Naru, in this mid lane. 20 CS advantage lead. building up pretty big against Westor. Westor, as you saw, throwing out the ultimate on the waters early on. Did not find its mark. That fabulous. We'll see how he continues to deal with this one. Yet to complete that Rod of Ages. Meanwhile, Pride, you can see, clearly feeling very confident on this Nidalee now. Just shoving in that way. But Fab Fabulous is landing most of the farm here. Not causing too many problems for him. Has to burn that ultimate, but it's a very, very yeah. quick timer. Almost on his Rod of Ages as well to start charging that up. And we're seeing Triforces almost coming out here. Starting on the Sheens. And Prides and Westor are going to be putting out some big damage when they spike to those Triforces. Almost up on 11 minutes right now. The gold is completely even as AHQ looks to teeter top of that in their favor. Yeah, but no vision control. Zero. They definitely need some more wards down there. That's one of the things that happens when you're 11 minutes into the game and you still haven't swapped your lanes back. Uh, it really is all on the jungle and mid laner there to continue ward control. And Naru wasn't really keeping up his end of the bargain. Created the nice vision black hole there. And AHQ was able to take the dragon. Oh, oh my Death gosh! Death once again turns in trouble. The wave not doing enough. The knockback from Holy Phoenix just about saving his support there. But again, Green T landing the hooks. It's Absolutely one, ridiculous. It is one thing against the Nami lane. We've seen this matchup before today, though. The Trist Nami can sustain a bunch, and because they didn't die there, it's actually AHQ that has to double recall despite landing what seemed like a great hook. Astor cleaning up mid lane. This is the first time he's really been able to farm without pressure on him so far. 116 to 88 there. A lot coming out of Naru. He picks up the Fiendish Codex as well to get a bit more power under his belt with that cooldown. Blue buff already on him. Doesn't look like he wants to attack or try to defend that war too much. Not much vision coming out from DP right now, and it could start to affect him quite a bit. Yeah, they seem happy to stick around with this Tristana in the top lane. Holy Phoenix. That's true. He's been up there a very long time. Westor, he's got to that point where he can just play full Trickster onto the minions and wipe the wave out instantly. Mm -hmm. He's sitting on a lot of gold. You can see you guys, Turkish fans, up early. A lot teams. of Turkish fans voting. Of course, we are right on here. the English stream, so no surprises that the Turkish fans have a higher percentage than the Taipei fans here, because they're all in this building. <laughs> they are watching live. Maybe they need to get that tweet on, who knows. Pride. The cheers for clears. Cheers for clears. Yeah, Pride's still sitting on a lot of gold as well. He's farming up from, as you mentioned, get that Trinity Force. It may well be now that he goes back to get it. And that's going to start causing problems. You can already see he's putting a lot of pressure on Fab Fabulous, unable to stop him in that split push. Somebody is going to have to deal with him. And I got a feeling there's going to be Holy Phoenix that's going to be separated. Split pushing yeah. against them. He's going to have to try and go up against Italy. Uh oh, not a super save time. That's a great shark. Uh oh, Naru very much so looking like he could go down here. What a great sky to the week. Oh, that's the flash. Off of his play, Flynn for the trickster. Westor making it look easy with the rest of the team. Actually, he just got it himself. Yeah, hardly takes damage right there. And a nice move by Westor catching Naru coming back from a ward, I believe. And that is just real trouble for Syndra. Oh, finally a miss. <laughs> Oh, plays there though, to follow on, he can see Nas comes through, they get the slowdown, we can throw out the lands and Westall doesn't take it, now he does, slides on in there, the kick from Crystal, is it enough to save touch? No it is not, oh maybe oh. it is, but Crystal's in trouble now, he will go down, that's picked up by Westall, touch goes as well, and suddenly AHQ starts to pick up multiple kills. And those kills woke the crowd up as well right here. It just seems like HQ was in position and Dark Passage was not. Nothing.
incredibly spectacular, except for Westor's juke of the tidal wave and then grab the lantern. That part was awesome. Actually, if he would have grabbed the lantern while the tidal wave was going, it would not have taken him to his final destination. The tidal wave would have interrupted his lantern thing. So it was such nice movement there by Westor to juke around the tidal wave and have the patience to go in. We get to see it again. Yeah, obviously missed hook, but then Touch has nowhere to run. He has to get caught by the play. And this is the big moment right here. If he grabs it now, he doesn't make it. He taught his just around it, seemingly going through the model, but that is because he's played so much Fizz and knows exactly where he is. And then they're able to secure both these kills. Crystal with a failed flash. He would not have been able to escape anyway. And this will be tough for DP to recover from. Green T is creating an immense amount of opportunities for AHQ, and they are taking hold of every one so far. But, like we said, not much objective focus. So the, all the turrets still stay up. It's four to one, just the kills right now. Yeah, you mentioned before all those fights started to happen, before the three kills all came back to back, massive lack of vision, and we're still seeing it right yeah, now. Dark. Unawares, of course it is just <laughs> Green T sit laying in the bush, causing them problems. He's gone off the map. They don't know where he is. Teleport coming in, though. They're going to go for it. Five oh, man. coming in. I mean, there's one it. way forward here, but they're outnumbered. That's the grab again onto Touch. A lot of the disengages grab there, but they're going to be able to finally get Green T. Give him a little bit of his own mana. Oh, Two Brody. rockets comes in. Very low on mana on this one. Back to Cougar form. He might be able to hit his mark. What an arcade smash coming in from Bad Fabulous. And Chum the Waters is going to chomp down on Touch. Sushi for dinner. 3-0-1 right now for Westdoor. He's getting a little bit scary. Of course, that was a traded kill. But the fact that Fizz was getting farmed is a bad omen. And you got to think, you look at nerves maybe for touch there. That wave was way too early on the teleport. Completely mistimed it. If it would have been at the right time, disengage could have happened. Westall would have gone in on his own as it was. Oh, right. We didn't see that. I mean, it's okay. Sun was in his eyes. Yep. Dark Passage has played on very big stages before. We saw 10,000 showed up for their regional finals. But they yep. definitely seem to be showing a little bit of jitters right here. Touch is struggling. He didn't play in that game. That's the big thing. Touch You're only right. came in for the international wildcard because obviously the support that used to be there right. is on military service, so was unable to leave the country. So Touch is coming into this one. Really, you know, obviously Gamescom was pretty big. There was a pretty big yeah. crowd there, mm -hmm. but now he's at the World Championships. That's yeah. what they were fighting to get there. They were only up against Legacy. Now they're up against big teams around the world, and they're up against AHQ in the home club, really, effectively. Oh! Whoa. Green tea. Well, that's two. That's two, man. Starting to kill <laughs> that percentage. <laughs> yeah, that number's getting pretty big right now. He's going to have to pick his game up, clearly. Two and a half thousand gold lead here, mm -hmm. trying to vision control around the dragon. Look at the pink wards. Dark Pass is going to have to pull off something pretty spectacular. They do theoretically still have a great team fight. Pride's on Italy, doesn't have a split push presence right now. If Fab Fabulous could find a fight with the rest of his team, they may be able to turn this game back. Better warding coming out for sure. The double sight stone finally out for these guys. Dark Passage able to get quite a bit. However, there is a big item difference between the 80 carries right now. Yeah, absolutely. You can see Infinity Edge was completed by Garner Devil, of course, getting that kill of and two assists. Meanwhile, Holy Phoenix yet to get that one. AHQ starting off and almost killing this one. DP, are they going to go deep? They might go for it. Crystal gets hooked in, though. Tries to come through. You're not getting out of that one. Another fantastic hop by Green Tea. Not the play Dark Passage needed to make right there. Failed steal, could not retreat, and now AHQ continues to pressure. Slow moves as AHQ starts to drown out the vision for DP here. They're going to set up even more and take everything they can. Bottom turret's about to go down as they control the map. You know, AHQ have quick games in their region, yes. and I think we're starting to see why. Now that they have the advantage, they are really starting to put some serious pressure. Number three miss, right there. <laughs> it was a blind hook. We've got to give him that one. He's but actually on a you. terrible missing spree. I haven't seen him land one in He landed one in the pit. All right. Yeah. He's got right in front of us. It's like two feet away. <laughs> <laughs> so, AHQ right now, as we were just saying, you know, they know how to close games out. And Dark Passage, they got to be careful that this doesn't quickly get out of control because it is already slipping away. 4,000, close to 5,000 gold differential at 18 and a half minutes. It's a big problem. We put a lot of focus on Holy Phoenix. 5K right now has 1,000, but he's still about 1,600 behind. The team considers him to be one of the heavy carries. If he's not going, 
the confidence really doesn't come through there. Still have Naru on Syndra, so that could easily be a playmaker, but Westor has just been far and beyond making more plays with less items. Yeah, it is a big problem. You can see it was the two tech now carries. More. That is where the goal difference is. <laughs> yeah. It is the mid and the AD carry, and if they're ahead, it causes a massive problem. There's a massive mm -hmm. chunk of damage. You can yep. see AHQ group in, pushing for this top turret. Fab Fabulous has to be leaving this turret right now, well, or he's in no. trouble. Uh -oh. Slicing Maelstrom only stops so much. He's able to get away from the hook, but they are just going back and forth. Who wants it? Who wants it? Prides. Lack of vision control, lack of foresight is what's happening for Dark Passage right now. They were not even prepared enough to launch a valid counterattack against that incredibly slow-moving four-man dive from AHQ. It kind of blows my mind to have a lack of vision control with the two sight stones that they have. It's kind of like when a steamroll is coming towards you and Naked Guns. <laughs> they just didn't get out of the way. He didn't see it coming. And he's a big tree. He couldn't dodge it that quick. So, Dark Passage. Now they react. Nauru coming in. Trying to put the damage oh, down. And uh oh, oh. Dark, woo. Dark Passage trying to make the play, but AHQ, they react well. And while this is all happening, Westall's just down the bottom, free farming. He is getting pretty farmed here. One thing we need to mention actually is Garnet Devil right here. He is having a spectacular game and is greatly underappreciated by the overall community. I've actually been watching a lot of those LCS pros in Korean solo queue streams, and they'll always feature what players are in the game. On a couple occasions, I've seen Garnet Devil in the really high ELO games, but he's not listed. Like, he is high up in Korean yeah. solo queue right now, and is a very good AD carry, having a great game. A lot of times you don't hear about him because they kind of shadowed by TPA in the region, but AHQ definitely able to put up some play here. Whether DP would be playing strong or not, they are making the moves and they are making things happen. Littering the map right now. Looks like a light bright on the top side. Not pushing the lanes too much, though. Looking for fights a little too much, but they're keeping the lead. Currently, mid lane goes down. It's 3-0 to zero in turrets. Currently unanswered by Dark Pass. It's the blue buff being stolen away from them. That's going to be cleared up. Naz smites that one away. And AHQ are taking just about anything they want right now from Dark Passage. Yeah. They are seemingly unable to answer anything. They're going to try and group. They're right. going to push the mid lane. Dark Passage knows that they have nothing to deal with mid lane. Even though they have a goal disadvantage, their only option is to try and get a nice five-man fight. However, it puts oh. them at huge risk, and that's the worst guy to get fished. Oh, I thought he was going to bring it into Naru, but they're still going for the fight. Westor is a little too far. There's the kill coming out onto Touch. He goes down while blowing summoners, and AHQ starts picking up a few more. Two for one so far. Focus right now from the culling. Pride jumps in onto Naru, and they're going to keep the kills coming. Yeah, as soon as Pride's joined the fight, this is all over. Fab Fabulous is going to get locked up. Good play comes out. There's another Garnet Devil cleaning up right now. 5 0 for the focus is on Westall, forget yeah. it. It's Garnet Devil and Green Tea. They are a mean partnership in that duo lane. So nicely done. Like you said, they focus Westor, but everybody else is still having a good game. 504 Green or Green or Garnet Devil as they push in. Yeah, and they only ended up focusing Westor right there because he was so far ahead of the rest of the team. Mm. Everyone else is able to follow up right there. Great mechanics there by AHQ to finish off these fights, and they are looking for a quick and decisive victory. One more time on that. Yeah, I mean, Great Shark, obviously. Holy Phoenix jumps away to kind of close the distance, but he flashes in and eats an exhaust right away. So he is clearly in a pretty rough situation. They burn everything on him, which doesn't leave anything left for the flank that comes in. Obviously, Prize and the Kazakhs are behind them here. Nice juke up top there by Garnet Devil to avoid the Syndra stun. And it was just a collapsed, messy skirmish because of the great lead by AHQ. They're able to easily come out on top. Already. Looking for that Baron, creating their pick focus comp here. Really working out for him as Westor just needed those few items to spike. He may have had a hard time in lane, but he knows the power of Fizz and he knows when to use it accordingly. So AHQ clearly in the lead in this one. Oh dear. So no. Oh, Jump the water's not quite landing. Holy Phoenix, get out of that one. Back to my train of thought. What are you going to be looking at towards this one? AHQ, they are looking like a very solid team. Granted, they are against Star Passage right now. True. But Edward this. Gaming and Samson White got to be looking towards this and maybe having a little bit of a worry. I mean, that's going to be the deciders in these groups. This has been such a powerful performance by AHQ. They're going to look to try and make their statement. Obviously, this is the game that they had to win. They're going to try and build on their confidence. They have a rather formidable opponent later today. 
right? This is kind of their momentum game before they have to play Samsung White. And another query I'd just like to throw out there. This is AHQ. They're looking solid right now. Taipei Assassins dominate them. They're in True. TSM's group. They're going to be playing later. That is going to be an awesome game. You're absolutely right about that. Green Tea, though, trying to make another play. Oh, he gets the play first oh. to add the slow, making sure his hit percentage goes up a bit, forcing the flash from Crystal. He's got nobody to safeguard to, and the team's in recuperate mode. Unfortunately, no one grabbed the lantern before he flashed to break it, <laughs> so when he made that spectacular hook play, the follow-up was late. However, Prides is being a bit of a menace down in that bottom lane, and they're just using that pink board vision control around Baron. They started early, though. That's, that's risky. Well, when you got Green T running defensive, I don't think it's too risky. He's been landing those plays, the hooks. They have peeled off, though. They didn't fancy it. They didn't feel they had quite enough there. Or are they just juking them out? Touch comes in, clears the pink wards. And as you mentioned, down the bottom lane, Prides, he's just called his own all sorts of problems. And you know what? We talked about it. They had the advantage. They had the choice. They could have taken Nidalee in this bottom lane. Fab Fabulous does play this champion very well. Yep. And you've got to wonder why they went with Maokai. Really wanting that safe lane, knowing there's a lot of fight coming for both teams. There's solid play in every player here, but obviously AHQ stepping up to the plate way before DP and able to just get their items out early. We saw the aggression from Naru in the mid lane, but nothing really came of it. They did not try to continue to pressure that, and Westor just got going. Carry for the team, and they are going to be right behind him. Like we said, you got to go through the door to get anywhere. AHQ slowing down a little bit. Not an incredibly right. decisive finish to this one. They have to be careful that Holy Phoenix can't split push too much to become strong. However, they are not too worried about it, knowing that they have the assassination fizz here. And also the fact that Garnet Devil with the five kills can probably take Triss down for the next 10 or 15 minutes uh, in 1v1s. And they're just trading an inner turret or an outer turret, which with a 10,000 gold lead isn't ideal, but it's still a good trade. Well, Holy Phoenix is not backed off yet. It's continuing to push to so see how much damage he can get down on that top lane turret. Westall steaming in there. You can see Home Guard boots on him now, immediately reacting to get out of it. The question is, can he get away from Scott Free? It looks like he will. AHQ peeling back. So, first turret of the game for Dark Passage there. 5 to 1. Now, still gigantic advantage for AHQ. Gigantic indeed. Bot lane's kill participation has been Ooh. almost with everything. Nine out of the 11 for both Garnet and Green Tea as they make their way around the map. Very omnipresent, mostly Green Tea. Somehow Garnet Devil finds his way there as well. Two items to the going to be possibly uh, Phantom Dancer coming in from Holy Phoenix. There it is, actually finished up. Very good for him. Hopefully he can start getting a split push on that can kind of go against Prides, but I do not think so. Not at this point. Prides literally yeah. is giving no cares to what Fab Fabulous <laughs> does, that is for sure. He is so, so confident right now in his play that he is basically manhandling a guy that got himself a penskiller last year's international wild card. He's, yeah. he's not a bad player, he's just being outplayed in this matchup. Right. And I think Prides is just trying to be as obnoxious as possible right now, <laughs> uh, mainly because if Dark Passage does kill him, it gives his team bear. They'd have to send so many people for him in order to actually Look get the a focus. Kill, yeah. Which is they're actually trying to do right now. Uh oh. That's the thing. It could even be a 2v1 yeah. if he dodges enough. Where there's a support, there's usually an AD carry. So they're putting way too much into this one. Well, they're going for it. They're going to catch away. Pride's in trouble. Is he going to get a flash away? No, the pounce is there. Holy Phoenix follows through. But look at this. He's going to catch on towards him. But coming down is Westall. Touch is going to go head to head with him. Realizes the danger. Chop the waters. Catches. That is a very dead fishy. But Holy oh. Phoenix coming back in. They're going to try and turn it around while this is happening. Garnet Devil takes down the top turret. So a death for a turret. AHQ yeah. still come out on top. Honestly, AHQ didn't group for Baron while they were getting collapsed on with Prides. Good move there by Dark Passage. They burn exhaust and ultimates, but at the end of the day, they get a kill and only cost them a turret. It looks like they're going to start setting up for something special here towards the blue slash Baron side of Dark Passage. You can see Fab Fabulous doesn't really want to go up there. Wary about the situation. AHQ is not going to waste too much time on that. They like their kills, but they also need to keep making moves. Got to be careful they don't get flanked in his mid lane. Naz is coming around the side. We know what Green T is capable of, and they reacted well. Still, massive lack of vision for Dark Passage. They didn't get out too far. I mean, they do get a pink ward down. It's instantly cleared out by AHQ. So, 
trying to get themselves a little bit of coverage in their own jungle and maybe, just maybe, start to push. Remember, Holy Phoenix, he's on Tristana. Mm. He can get going if he gets the items, but Garnet Devil is still somewhere ahead. And there's a few things about this AHQ team that we have to know. They have very weak tank line, so actually diving turrets or sieging turrets is not that beneficial. They need to be able to find fights in the open. Also, because of the Nidalee, their team doesn't transition fantastically to 5v5 team fights. Pride needs to create split push opportunities, which then create weird collapses, and AHQ needs to find picks within those collapses. So they actually can't really force a very quick and decisive win. They need to wait for the opportunity. When Pride gets picked off 2v1, that just delays it even farther. And Dark Pash is, is reading this. You can see Fast Fabulous, as we saw before, using his saplings to pretty much get everywhere because that pick comp is so dangerous from AHQ. Westor, if he's not the one to be carrying, Garnet Devil's the second carry on the team. And right now at 504, with a little help of how awesome Westor's been doing and the green tea hooks in the beginning, both of them are on par with their usual play. 30 minutes in the game, that 10,000 gold lead is still there. And Prides, nobody's giving him any trouble right now. Well, he's. You say that, but Fabulous is now starting to actually juke towards him. He's going to get that Radiance completed soon. And Pride's his power against him in a split push is going to start to fade. If Maokai can neutralize him, it's actually all right for Dark Passage. Without Maokai, the initiation is low from Dark Passage, but if Syndra gets a stun on a squishy target, they could still actually delay even farther. This is not the worst situation for Dark Passage. They're actually doing a great job of uh -oh. avoiding AHQ because AHQ is living in their jungle. However, as I say that, Crystal! Ooh. Safeguards himself quickly to safety. 50k to 41 right now. 11 to 4 on that board. The kills aren't coming in for AHQ, so they're going to have to force the objective. And AHQ has to be willing to pull the trigger. They have sufficient vision control right now, and they need to trust in their vision control to try and make a play happen. Oh, Green Team once again. The hot lands. How the hell did that get through? Crystal does manage to get away, and Ultimate was burned for a flash. But meanwhile, Naru caught out. He's going to get caught. Still going to be enough. Mask gets in. He gets the kill. This is it. Dark Passage in all the trouble. Westall slipping and sliding through the entire Dark Passage front line. And that is exactly what they were looking for. Slipping and sliding indeed. He outplayed everyone right there. Especially with the playful trickster. The instant Naru tried to get the stun on him. Three kills. Easy bear. I love the fact that they actually got the fight so far outside of Baron before they did the objective. So AHQ, they keep history repeating itself with blood before the objectives. 14 to four, they pick up Baron and it shouldn't be too long before they get to the fountain if they don't get too crazy with the kills again. Dragon's gonna be up, a little bit of picked up gold here that will definitely help DP. Oh. Late game Dragon, nice. Uh -oh. oh, maybe not, Never mind. Uh, no, That's gonna be Prides, he's gonna mark his territory. He needed to run away from that one. Pride's coming round, and you got to give a huge chunk of credit to Green Team for the entire game, really. He's yeah. been the man that's been the initiator. He's been creating the plays once again. The hook on Crystal, everybody collapses to defend your teammate, which, you know, it's just natural instinct, but it caused yeah. some problems. They should have just said, you know what? You got caught, you got hooked, you're gone. We gotta check this out one more time. Obviously, uh, this play was actually created by Westor, landing the shark right before Nara could flash away. Ooh. Such a great Zonyas right after, after his playful trickster, and that gave the reset to Nas as well. He could flash over the wall at just the right point, too. Like, Westor is so good at Fizz. Gets the double kill, gets more farm, finishes his Void Staff, and secures the Baron. That extended Zonyas with the playful trickster. Given enough team, a time for the team to get on his back, carry it through. Great scores around for AHQ right now as they continue their push into the base of Dark Passage. Very good game for the first time on an international stage here at Worlds. Well, one thing is for sure, when anyone plays AHQ later on, Fizz is going to be bad. <laughs> It, you know, there's a reason he had 16 yeah. bands against him. Yeah, there's that a reason that 79% of the bands against AHQ are against Westor is because there's so much threat. You don't want Twisted Fate or Zed to get through either. So in yeah, some you do? situations, you're forced into using all of your bands on Westor. Extremely good at Assassins. Great champion pool to be utilized. And here he gets his one of the top, if not the top, and he is just wreaking havoc on everybody. Chum the Waters is up again, so they're going to be right on the front door. DP, Culling comes out! Push touch away, and that's not going to be good for the team. That's the disengage they've been using with the tidal wave as AHQ now starts to approach the turret, just waiting for Prides to get a little closer in the bottom lane. 
They still don't have good dive potential is one right. right here. As far as actually tanking the turret, Prize is a little bit tanky, but you don't want to lead the charge with the Nidalee. <laughs> Once again, they will try and split up a little bit. When they get the hook, maybe Ooh. that will trigger things. Ooh, Westor, because of his Lich Bane, takes that down pretty quick. Yeah, and you can see while that's happening, of course, Prides puts the pressure back down in the mid. They collapse on towards the middle turret, get a chunk of damage down the hook. This time only finding a little caster minion, not the one they were after. And they continue the split push. Back down the bottom, Prides goes, keeps that wave going in the roof. He's the man that's been sent down now to try and deal with him. Yeah, and we can really see the gold lead getting out of hand here. 15,000 overall. In particular, though, the uh -oh. mid lane has a huge disadvantage, and that's one way that it manifests. Cutting down the tree quite quick. AHQ gets what they want as they start to pepper the inhibitor. What? How is he hitting these hooks? Amazing stuff coming out of Green Tea. Once again, they back off with not enough control, but that's because Westdorf wreaking havoc in the mid lane with Brides. They are trying to run DP thin here across the front side of their base. Kind of strange that they didn't actually take the top turret down, which is the, the strange part about that whole thing. They I'm with you cracked on that. wide open. Finally, this time they will do. Westdorf's on that one. Just needs one more little hit. There's the middle one going in. And it seems that everything will tumble all at once here. AHQ making their way in wow. towards Dark Passage Basin. Honestly, they're putting a very solid performance here in their first outing. Whoa! Oh. Bright's going deep on that one. Ultimate comes out and Nauru turns it back around. The tower hit should be enough. No will way! The go oh down my go. God. He gets away with it and they push on through to the base. I think he just took every spell that DP had to throw at him. Westor tries to get in, but he gets scattered like the weak. Garnet Devil's going to be hit up by Holy Whoa. Phoenix here. The last shot crits and it hits. Green Tea's now the focus. DP is getting what they want inside the base. If this can go to Holy Phoenix and get him some good items that he needs, but it's going to be a tough one. I see AHQ coming right back. Yeah, they got a little bit overzealous right there. Uh, not really sure what they were thinking <laughs> in, in a few of those moves. Nerves in front of a home crowd, obviously, and probably just straight up yeah. adrenaline. As soon as Pride escaped this <laughs> so one, deep. as soon as Pride escaped this one without dying, HQ thought, "We win. This game is over. They just burned Cinderella. Let's go." Uh, Westdoor though gets kicked back. Westdoor got outplayed in this fight, specifically that move right there. He would have killed Holy Phoenix if Naru had not hit him with the scatter of the week at that exact moment, and that completely turned the tides of the fight because it reset Holy Phoenix, it allowed him to get the damage, and it kept Dark Passage in the game. Well, it's a triple kill for Holy Phoenix. We'll see if that's enough. Can they hold on? They did only lose the middle inhibitor, but the top one is cracked wide open, and the bottom turret on next to nothing with a gigantic gold differential of 14,000 gold here. AHQ, big, strong position. Prides, will he go too deep on this one? It's the first misplay he's actually made all game, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but he can't knock their confidence, that's for sure. I mean, you know, 30 plus minutes in, 17, 18 kills. They're gonna be a little cocky. Absolutely, and now, I mean, yes, they gave a triple kill to Holy Phoenix. <laughs> But because Holy Phoenix is so paranoid of getting every last ounce of damage out, he has no magic resistance. If Westor gets in range of him, I think he gets one shot. I'm pretty sure that's what happened with the 600 AP Fizz against a Trish with no MR. It's not going to look pretty, that's for sure. She's going to fall down and go boom. 68,000 to 53,000 right now. 17 to 8 as the kills continue to flow in for AHQ. And now they've been starting to grab the objectives once again to the front door of Dark Passage's base. This should be a downed inhibitor, but it's going to be Pride. It's taking a little bit longer to get to the bottom lane, so they should be able to defend it for now. Yeah, we just saw AHQ pinging on Holy Phoenix. I think it was simply put target acquired. Let's see who can get him first <laughs> because. I don't think they're going to hold the trigger too long on this one. It's one thing to build all your damage items, but if you have to give so much respect that you can't even get in range to do damage, the damage items themselves aren't worth it. He needed to build some magic resist before finishing his fourth offensive item. Almost to that level 18 max. Have his range, but like you said, getting in too close. West door, that's the range he wants. Slowly moving around, keeping it split. West door and now Nas instead of Prides in the mid lane, and they're going to work to two, three between mid and bottom. Yeah, that's split. turret's going down quick. That's split perfectly right now. West door up on towards the Nexus turret, just off towards the top half of the screen, and it's splitting Dark Passage completely in half. Touch so, so careful right now. Holy Phoenix as well. They did get Nas very low on hit points. That was a good split from Holy Phoenix. You can see that shield on him. 
built up because of the damage he did, and that has delayed them mm -hmm. ever so slightly, but AHQ is just going to back off, take Dragon, while Dark Passage, are they going to risk it? Are they going to go for a ballsy Baron play? They may have to, but I don't know if it's going to work out. It was a nice delay here, and it's going to delay the game for quite some time. HQ ends Whoa. up taking the Dragon. That's uh, getting in range. They're going for Westall. Upgrist. Whoa! And goodbye. He was exhausted during that. Still takes down. This holy can't touch him. Cannot touch him. Indeed, Fox goes down, but it's only for himself to be put in it. Green Tea gets another play for himself. The flash box to start it off. 19 to 8 here, coming up on 40 minutes. It's going to be Pride looking for another one. Garnet's already in the base. These guys are coming out of the woodwork right now. Having to throw out the Tsunami. And that's going to be the safety for Touch. Yeah, I think you answered the question there. You know, if if uh, Westall with 600 AP can get onto Holy Phoenix, he could one shot <laughs> him. Sure as hell he can. AHQ going to shove on through. That's the top. Nexus turret going down. One final one remaining. Nothing they can do to stop it once Westall comes on through. And AHQ in front of their home crowd pick up their first victory over Dark Passage. That's got to feel pretty good, but the battle was won. They still need to win the war. They are in an incredibly tough group. They handled Dark Passage quite well, but it took them 14 minutes and 16 seconds. Definitely a strong first performance. They got a lot of work to do. Great play all around from the team. They can follow Westor's strength. Green Tea coming up huge. Such a playmaker, eight and one on his recent games of Thresh. So it should have been expected that he was going to do that over and over again. Solid overall performance. Back of a chair. That's exactly what they, uh, Dark Passage, were thinking there, spinning round. Of course, AHQ coming across, congratulating them. And honestly, all the talk, Westor played fantastic. Yes, sure, he delivered, but wow. for me, it was Green Tea. Green Tea was the man. He got Garnet Devil going, he shut down Holy Phoenix, he shut down just about anyone that came towards that duo lane. Crazy. Yeah. It was a pretty cool thing to watch there. Green Tea, definitely the playmaker, it seems like, for AHQ, being able to set up all those plays. I guess that is what a playmaker is. Yeah, we look at, <laughs> we look at AHQ, though, move forward in our thoughts here. Does there has it 